Hey folks, my guest today is Ernie Teo. He's the co-founder and CTO of Dodaco. He has a PhD in economics and game theory and has taught in universities worked and worked at IBM Blockchain Research. Their company is Document Process Management on Blockchain. Ernie, ready to take us to the top? Yeah, I need Okay. So what does document process management mean on top of blockchain? Right. So if you look at a lot of enterprise blockchain use cases, it's all about document management like uh, supply chain related. So there's a lot of document flows when it comes to blockchain consortiums and enterprise projects. So what we are looking to do is to create a SaaS that empowers any company to be able to tap onto that feature and to be able to put documents on blockchain that are verifiable, uh, that are attested by different individuals along uh, the business process. And that allows um, you know, uh, visibility across the ecosystem, across different uh, partners and counterparties. And Ernie, what are companies paying on average to monthly to, to use this technology? Um, so they're paying about $30 uh, dollars in, in, on average uh, for an individual license. So they are, that's uh, a basic license for uh, the basic features on our platform, which includes our document signing as well as the document management on blockchain. And of when course. did you guys also, launch the business? When did you write the first line of code? Um, we started the business last year in March. So the first lines of code was written in around uh, June last year. And we mm -hmm. officially launched the platform in July this year. Very cool. Congratulations. And how many customers are you now working with? Um, we have about a thousand uh, registered users on our SaaS platform, but we are also working with enterprise customers. So uh, enterprise customers in Singapore, for example, some financial institutions, um, property agencies, and even government agencies are using our platform. Yeah. How many are paid customers? Um, um, so the en enterprise users are, are all paid customers. Uh, for the, for How the many of those platform, are there, though? Are there a thousand? Um, no, so they are, they are... Okay, so for one of our financial institution customers that are about I think 300 registered uh, users within the company. That's one example. Uh, we also have our uh, property agencies that are but Ernie, what I'm, what, I'm trying well. to, yeah. what I'm trying to understand is how many brands pay you as a customer, not registered users under the brand. How many individual companies pay you? Uh, so for, for brands right now, uh, I'll say around... Mm, 30 to 40. Uh, okay. And those 40 brands, they each pay you 30 bucks a month or it's $30 a month per user, per brand? Uh, so for, for brands, uh, we have a different pricing model. We, we go by credits. So we, we, charge, uh, we sell each, uh, each brand credits to use under the company. So, um, and credits can go anywhere between... Uh, so the, the standard price is about $5 per transaction. Okay, so five dollars and a transaction. One transaction is one credit. Yeah. So how 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 many credits are these customers using on average per month on the platform? Well, I guess around the number of a hundred. Yep. Okay, so I can take a hundred uses times five each. Each of these forty brands is paying about four hundred or five hundred dollars per month. Um. Yeah, I guess for the bigger brands, it's around 100. And there are some smaller businesses as well. So on average, those would be like 10 to between, around 10. Yeah. Okay. So can I, I mean, can I take 40 customers times 100 bucks a month? You guys are doing about $4,000 a month in revenue right now? Uh, yes, in terms of the SME customers, I guess, the smaller size customers. But there are like the... Um, the big enterprises will be on an annual basis. So we, 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 we charge like an annual fee instead. So those are averaging around, um, I think, about $100,000. So we got two or three of these larger clients for uh, annual, uh, that pays an annual subscription. Okay, got it. So three hundred thousand. Uh, you know, if you look at that monthly, you guys are doing like more like thirty thousand bucks a month right now on revenue, three hundred sixty grand a year, something like that. Yep. And you've done that fairly quickly. So in the past sort of twelve months, where did you get these first sort of forty, fifty customers? 
Um, a lot of it is happening locally here in Singapore, uh, but we have also expanded now to the region, including Malaysia. Um, well, we started off by partnering with the uh, with the Singapore government, well, because the Singapore government rolled out a uh, certificate authority uh, for digital signing, and we partnered with them to incorporate that onto our platform. So that got a lot of uh, use cases in terms of government agencies as well as um, property agencies because they are they are interested to use this feature, right? right. And then um, also because I guess it was COVID, so uh, we got to talk to a lot of people who were interested to digitize their business, and we provide quite an interesting value proposition because we are using blockchain and. And by using blockchain, we are providing a proposition where we don't store the documents of the of our customers on our on our cloud. Rather, they provide they provide their own um, document repositories, which we tap onto. So there's no third party that's actually hosting the documents. Rather, we are hosting the document evidence and processes. Understood. And so you mm-hmm. get going. Have you guys bootstrapped the business, or did you raise capital? Uh, we raised capital. Yeah. How much did you guys decide to raise? So our last round, uh, we so we closed about two a top, about two million US dollars uh, in our last round. It was a seed round. Yeah. And what year was that? Uh, this year. So okay. we closed it around the same time as. So we were fundraising from the start. So, but we closed that round uh, in July when we launched the platform. Okay, so so two million dollars seed round, and why did you and Daphne, your co-founder, why did you decide that you needed to raise capital? Why couldn't you bootstrap? Um, so because we thought that the um this industry is growing fairly quickly, and we we want to catch the wave, you know, where everyone is trying to digitize that digitize their business. So um, and we needed to scale fairly quickly. Um, so we we needed to hire you know hire a bigger team and uh to to scale up our marketing, scale up our business, uh, business efforts, right? So, um, yeah, definitely, we think um, fundraising in this case is quite important for us to to really scale it up. And what's your team size today? How many folks? Um, we have about thirty people right now. Yeah. Three is your, How many of those are engineers? Um, about close to twenty. Yep. Yeah. 20. And so how does this work? If someone's listening right now and they're currently using DocuSign, why should they yeah. switch to Doco? Well, the main, main, main proposition here is we, are, we have a decentralized proposition. So what that means is number one, we, have, we treat the document separate from the document evidence process. So we can decouple that because we use blockchain to register the document hashes such that um, it becomes immutable and uh, hard to tamper with. Right. And then the second proposition is because it's decentralized, um, the verification process is quite different. Right. So with DocuSign, you need to be one of the document preparers or one of the signers to access the system to, to get the document evidence or to download the certificate of signing, for example. Right. So for our case, as long as you hold a copy of the signed document, you can verify it uh, off our verifier, which is a blockchain link verifier. So that, that difference means that if I were to provide uh, a document to my auditor or to a third party like a bank, and they need to verify the authenticity of the document and the document trail, they can do it on their own. They can directly do the verification uh, without trusting a piece of paper that I gave to them. Mm-hmm. And how are you finding these customers? Is it through the partnership with uh, the Gong, uh, the Singapore government? Uh, uh, we have various channels that we are working on now because. Uh, Government is one channel, but uh, with partnerships as well. So we, we work with various uh, system integrators to partner with them so, so that they can bring our solutions to their clients as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. What are some of the growth channels that are really working for you? Like the last two customers you got, what channel did they come from? The last two? Um, I Yes, it's, it's actually through ecosystem partners. So like mm-hmm. the system integrators I mentioned, uh, we also work with other uh, partners in, in, in the uh, like, um, you know, in partners network, basically. So um, the last two that we closed, um, one is through our, actually through our VC's recommendation. 
Um, mm. so, so the VC network, I think is also quite uh, important for us. Very cool. What's next product wise? Mm. Are you going to stick to document signing or what's next? Actually, the vision for the company is the whole realm of verifiable documents. So, um, and that's, that's very, uh, blockchain related as well. So, so like, for example, COVID, uh, vaccination certificates, these are going online through, through blockchain based certificates as well and allows verifiability. So we want to bring this verifiability to the business world. So, um, that, you know, any business who wants uh, documents they produce to be verifiable, checkable. Um, so verifiability, I mean, we can verify that it did come from this company and that the contents inside the document are not tempered with. So that's a very important follow-up uh, to, to look at automating business processes. Mm -hmm. well, we're certainly rooting for you, Ernie. I hope it goes well. In the meantime, <laughs> let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Wow. <laughs> um, favorite business book? I Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm more of the tech side. So, so um, I... We'll say none then. Number two, is there um, a skill yeah. <laughs> you're following or studying? Um, Stripe, I guess the Stripe guys, I think are people that we really look to. Um, we want to be kind of like the API providers for document processes. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Didaco? Hmm. Well, um, I guess we use GitHub a lot. Um, a lot of our code are written from scratch. So, um, because you know, it's it's a uh, enterprise level system. So, um, you know, we use the usual tools like GitHub, uh, Jira, etc. Number four, Ernie, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> well, I try to get my seven to eight hours. Um, okay, fair. And what's your situation? <laughs> married, married, single, kids? Uh, I'm single. Okay, and uh, how old are you? I'm 42. Yeah. 42. Last question. Yeah. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Well, um, <laughs> um, I guess, okay. So, so maybe like how, how to do business, like how, like how to grow a business and how to actually manage people. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. Didaco launched just about a year ago. They're now working with 40 customers doing about $30,000 a month in revenue. They want to be basically the API tool for everything related to document signing, verify it on blockchain. Uh, they've raised $2 million in their seed round to grow 30 on the team so far. Heavy engineering with 20 folks over there. Ernie, thanks for taking us to the top. Cheers. Thanks. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.